Live by night means sort of living by your own rules, living by your own set of uh, morals, you know, the, unfettered by the sort of how you would live by day, where you have to follow all the laws and rules and that sort of thing. Just slow down, stop driving like we did something. Relax. In the gangster community, there's a real hierarchy. I think we all get along. Forever way of lifestyle. Since the black and white movies, there were huge films telling this kind of story. So classic. I have always been attracted to what I simply call old time movies. Good story, good characters. Joe Coughlin starts off as a guy who goes to the First World War as a believer. He becomes very disillusioned after that war and decides he's not going to take orders from anybody. And so he takes up a life as an outlaw. I think what Joe has to learn about himself over the course of the movie is about how to be in the world, about what it means to make certain choices, what the price is of those choices. At the end of the movie, Joe finally has come to grips with what the price is for living by night, what the price you pay is for living by your own terms, making your own rules. He's lost something that's profoundly meaningful to him, and only then has he realized that the things he was searching for were right in front of him. Graciela. I think Dion really represents a guy that's committed to living by night, the gangster mentality. This is who I am. <sighs> and this is who I'll always be. I will live this way and die this way. And Joe, I think, is grappling with that the whole movie, what kind of man he wants to be. Coach up! Ah! <laughs> He's just a great, uh, you know, that guy. There's a loyalty there. There's a strong friendship and a love between these guys. Sorry about your father. One of the great things about him is he's really proud to be a gangster. He's really happy with it. If he wants to shoot somebody, if he wants to hit somebody, if he wants to grab a girl and kiss her, if he wants to grab that drink, if he wants to go dance, he does what he wants to do. Dion Bartolo. Yes, of course. This way, please, Mr. Esteban is waiting. There's all kinds of situations where a guy who's not necessarily as physically tall is quite intimidating and scary. When I was working on the role, I was trying to figure out how I would be his bodyguard, how I would be a guy that he would look to to protect him and to be in the gunfights with him. Get you to a doc. Oh, fuck, it hurts. Yes. Frank Nitti, who's Al Capone's right-hand man, was smaller than Capone. They called him the enforcer, and everybody was really scared of him. And Loretta Figus cut her own throat yesterday. It doesn't matter how big or tall or fat or skinny you are. She's got moxie. I couldn't do that. If you have a killer instinct in you, if you're willing to raise a gun up to someone's head and pull the trigger, then you're dangerous. Get her! He gained 40 pounds for the movie. He thought he couldn't grow taller, he'd get wider. But you're more of a Nance than me. What'd you say? In the book, they call him fat and they call him heavy. So I put on about 42 pounds to do it. I showed up at the camera test and I had some of that weight on and Ben really liked it and so I kept going. A lot of ice cream and beer and pasta. And it was a lot of fun, to be honest with you. He lost all the 40 pounds, amazing. He got really fat and then he really worked it off. Is that enough signs for you? Chris plays it great. We meet him as a tough love dad, but it's a little deeper than that. I didn't start the fight, Joseph, so don't criticize how I finished it. Tough love comes number one as the prerequisites for a father. The tough bit comes first. The love is understated, but very clearly there. This is my father, Tom Coughlin. He's a police captain, and he doesn't approve of the fact that his son has decided to be an outlaw. It's quite easy in the eyes. <sighs> yeah, she is. But nonetheless, his son is still his son, and he loves him. What you put out in the world will always come back to you. He's not completely sober, and he's not completely drunk either. And he's not particularly good, and he's not particularly bad. He's not an upright cop himself, but the nature of being a police officer at that time was different. You're kind of negotiating a situation where the moral compass is pretty skewed. I have no illusions. I'm a practical man. And I think he attempts to maintain a fairly stringent one, but he's very ambitious. And nothing happens without compromise. Let me see what I can do. Seeing what you can do is of little interest to me. Corruption and backroom dealing was sort of part of the game and still considered the province of the good guys. You can bend the rules, but I think his son has definitely gone over the line. Although it's Coughlin, we pronounce it at home, so I would have started off as Coughlin. 
and ended up as Coughlin. We pronounce Coughlin, Coughlin in, in, in American English. In Irish, it's Coughlin. I thought that, that mine was the generation where the name pronunciation switched, where his father would say Coughlin and Joe would say Coughlin. Ben informed me that that's the way that it's pronounced here in America. He's just one of the great actors alive. He's phenomenal in the movie. He's got very little to do, and he does so very much with it. The moral duplicity of Figgis is a great challenge. That's why you get into the business for characters like this. Not everything is black and white. I know we live in a fallen world. He's a religious man and a, and a, um, a former veteran and a man of real strong principles. What kind of guy's the chief? Well, he's a cop, so he's an asshole. He sort of has to deal with the corruption that's around him and all the crookedness and illegality, but he's got his own very strong sort of moral code. Never make the mistake of thinking that I am corruptible. I think he is broken. His wife dies, and there is a horrific event at Loretta's end. Figgis is crushed. Oh. His life is destroyed, and he's lost his mind. That's not right. <sighs> <sighs> Working with Chris has been amazing. We worked together in the town, and he was so lights out good. He was perfect for the role of the sheriff. He's just a wonderful actor, and he has this great sense of moral rectitude and wisdom, and he just was perfect. Reading Dennis's book, and in my research, I'm seeing how far Dennis went and how much he covered of the late 20s and 30s. Research and the study is half my fun. We did the camera test. He showed up, and he was already, like, in it and there and that guy and everyone kind of tiptoed around him because he was so obviously intensely working. This is the kind of film that got me interested in the business. I wanted both Albert and Maso to be people that the audience wasn't familiar with. My fortunes have changed a little bit. Me and Maso, we patched things up. I really wanted them to be scary because no one had seen them before. And I didn't want the audience to be comfortable with them. We don't get into this game to play second. Remo has done all work in Italy. When you play head of the mafia, sometimes you see really not refined people. But Maso is not like that. He's clever. And the man uh, with the power of other men's lives in my hands. Maso has this problem, he has a stupid son, but he's still his son, because he wants to leave something to his son. You teach Tigger the ropes, teach him to fish. That uh, makes him weak. Maybe that's the point, smart guy. Robert has mostly worked in Ireland. This guy is a personification of evil, really. Good to put a face to the name. And he makes no bones about what he does and why he does it, because actually, then, in order to survive in that environment, you had to act brutally and ruthlessly if anybody challenged you. Don't worry. I would never have brought him here. I think Albert's devastated because he loved her. Take it in the car, <laughs> Johnny. Joe, I'm sorry. I think he becomes quite emotional, almost a tragic figure in a way, because the memory of Emma is suddenly starkly there. She's dead. It was such a blast. She looked dead to you? I absolutely at the lottery. Every one of my first choices said yes. I just turned the camera on and watched them go.